this is Eric Goldberg, and it's my pleasure to provide commentary for a Bob Clampett cartoon, The Wacky Wabbit. I actually requested to do this in another Bob Clampett cartoon, lest anyone think I'm a complete dyed-in-the-wool, pure Chuck jones file. I love the Clampett stuff, too, and I love all of the directors at Warner's. <laughs> Look at the weight and the turning around of Elmer's backpack. It's pretty amazing, really. Now, you may notice like a slightly thick black line around Elmer's knuckle and kerchief in the long shot. That's because they animated his head on a separate level and they were trying to actually match it to the walk cycle, which they only did once. This opening animation here on Bugs is by Rod Scribner. You can tell in the kind of offbeat way he draws the faces. Now, when I was growing up, I used to see this cartoon all the time, and I always thought that was a little weird with the cow skull <laughs> on Bugs. But it works. It's fine. Now, one thing that's beautiful here is the singing harmony between Arthur Q. Bryant doing Elmer Fudd and Mel Blanc doing Bugs. Bugs is actually doing harmony while Elmer's doing melody. Don't you cry for Susanna. Don't you cry for me. I'm gonna get me what's of gold before victory. Good evening, a friend. Animation there by Bob McKimson. <laughs> now, sharp-eyed viewers will observe that this Elmer's fat. There were a few cartoons that they made where they decided to caricature his voice artist, Arthur Q. Bryan, who was a kind of tubby individual, and so they made Elmer fat. He lost weight again, you know, in the following year. But they did do a few of these cartoons, of which probably Wabbit Twubble was the first. Watch out, Doc. Well, one of the strangest things I... <sighs> one thing that you may notice here, love those multiple drawings on uh, Elmer's zip, is that the backgrounds are inconsistent. They go from long shot with open sky to internal inside this cave or cavern. You'll see how it goes kind of back and forth. Whoa, Keep gag there. Now this stuff all works fine. Clamp used a lot of great dry brushing in this cartoon. A terrific example of it comes up later. Dry brushing is when the cell painters used to dip their brush into a particular color and dry it off almost completely and then stroke it onto the cell, you know, so it got that kind of slightly feathery look that you can see on the zip lines. cartoons is absolutely terrific. The characters are really realized in a very three-dimensional way. Okay, now we're 
back inside the cavern. Come out, Mr. Wabbit. I have a winter surprise for you. Oh. Nice piece by Rod Scribner here. That's a corset for those of you too young to know. Women during the time had to cinch their waists in so they would look prettier. That's the West War. I'll get that wabbit. Okay, now watch this background cut here. Okay, they're inside the cavern. Still inside the cavern. Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc, where are you? And now we cut out, and it's open spaces. They're not in the cavern anymore. And that kind of thing you'll notice happening all through the cartoon. It's not like it makes a huge difference to the entertainment of the cartoon. By the way, some fantastic drawing and animation by Bob McKimson on Bugs here. And at the time, Bob McKimson really was considered the guy who refined Bugs Bunny into the recognizable Bugs that we all know. He did the first really, how shall I put it, studio-wide accepted model sheets of the character. And they're still classics to this day. Gold, and I'm gonna get it. No, 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 not that. Get a load of the dry brushing coming up on this sequence. It's just masterful. I got you. It's just great. And all the colors follow through, too. Rod Scribner gets the last gag. He always had about 28 times more wrinkles on the faces than everybody else did. 